Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPTE podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So today we've got a practice question related to the musculoskeletal system. Uh, we're, as you recall, as we go through this podcast, we're going through the FSBPT's content outline describing what is likely to be tested and giving you some examples of questions along the way. But before we get to that, just a quick reminder that we do cohort classes with PT final exams. So that's right. If you are a class president, class representative, or some way involved with your class, be sure to mention to your professors, to your class president, however it is that you all arrange and organize your NPTE preparations. But we actually come on campus. We do on-campus preparation. We also have an online version. We've got hybrid options if you want on-campus and online versions. Uh, we do pretty sweet discounts if you gather your cohort together and sign up for our crash courses. We've got lots of options. And just speaking from our past experience, so I've been doing these cohorts now for five or six years now. And it's a ton of fun to get on campus, talk about the content, really talk about how to prepare for exam day. Plus, it's something that really improves and boosts NPTE pass rates among cohorts. Uh, I just, in fact, I just got off the phone. Uh, this was a few days ago. I got off the phone with a professor at a university in the Midwest that uh, he he called me and just left me a message and said, hey, Will, I need to talk to you. And, you know, frankly speaking, I was a little bit, a little bit concerned. Okay, what is it that we need to talk on the phone about? Is there something wrong? Do we need to, to adjust something? And he called me simply to say, hey, Will, I just want to let, want to let you know, we just had our first 100% pass rate ever for our cohort. Uh, he's new program director. He was really excited about boosting his pass rate, but he had no idea that we could get up to the 100% pass rate mark. And so that's something that was, it was a real red letter day for me as we we talked on the phone and he he was just so excited. He could have just, what he said, he was over the moon. I'm trying to remember the exact phrasing he used, but he was so excited to get the students in his cohort across the finish line. And that's something we can provide for you. So again, if you're a representative somehow, you're involved with your program in any way, or you just want to suggest it to your program director, we do come on campus and we have some very, very promising results when it comes to pass rates. Usually we increase by by a fair margin and we've had a number of 100% first time pass rates among cohorts. And let me tell you, there's nothing better than passing on your first attempt, one and done, and being on your way. And so if you're involved in any way, please reach out to us, ptfinalexam.com slash contact. You can reach out to us directly there or, or on any of our socials, and we'll be happy to connect with you and get you some of those plans and pricing. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into our practice question here for today. So this is related to the musculoskeletal system. So the musculoskeletal system, this is the largest single system on the exam. You can expect somewhere around 51 to 60 questions on this. So those of you listening to this episode in the future, you'll note that the, the gross number of questions is changing from 200 scored items to 180 scored items. And that's because they're adding those case-based or scenario-based questions. And we'll talk about that in more detail as we get closer to the 2024 administration. But for now, just of note, we are, we're talking with the, the 2018 to 2023 content outline. And that being said, the content will essentially be the same. So we'll we'll stick with our content for now and just recognize this is equally applicable in the future as it is now. So let's go ahead and dive into our first question here. We've got our first practice question. We'll dive in. So first question here, or the, I guess the only question for today. During examination, a patient is noted to have excessive anterior trunk lean during the mid and terminal stance phases of gait. Which of the following interventions will be most effective at eliminating the gait deviation? So during examination, a patient is noted to have excessive anterior trunk leaning during the mid and terminal stance phases of gait. Which of the following interventions will be most effective at eliminating the gait deviation? Option one, bridging in hook lying. Two, mini squats in bilateral stance. Three, prone press-ups and four, side-lying hip abduction. So again, the options are bridging and hook lying, mini squats in bilateral stance, prone press-ups, side-lying hip abduction. And again, the question is about during examination, a patient is noted to have excessive anterior trunk leaning during the mid and terminal stance phases of gait. Which of the following interventions will be most effective at eliminating the gait deviation? Bridging, mini squats, prone press-up, Sideline hip abduction. <laughs> All right, so this one, uh, this one's talking about so that excessive anterior lean 
during the mid and terminal stance phase of gait. That's most likely due to a hip flexion contracture or tightness of the hip flexors. This is because as you go into mid and terminal stance, that requires extension of the hip. So you require about 20 degrees of hip extension during the terminal stance phase of gait. If you don't have that, if you can't get into hip extension due to tight hip flexors, you will compensate. There's three main compensations. Either you have excessive anterior pelvic tilt, you have excessive lumbar lordosis, or you have an anterior trunk lean from the, the very tight hip flexors. So therefore, the best intervention for a tight hip flexor is to go into some type of position that pushes you into hip extension. And on the list here, we've got prone press-ups as the primary or the, the only correct answer here that describes going into hip hip extension as a or it, targeting hip extension by by stretching the hip flexors. <laughs> Gotta make sure I say this right. Stretch the hip flexors by moving into hip extension. The prone press ups, you could also do this just prone lying and you could put a pillow up under the leg, something to push the leg into further extension. These other answer options are not directly targeting or not most effective at targeting hip flexor stretching. So the other answer options, bridging and hook lying. This is a target certainly on hip extension, but it's activating the hip extensors and is primarily used to strengthen the hip extensors. And again, because we don't have weakness of the hip extensors, this would be possibly secondary. I mean, it, it is good to, to strengthen the hip extensors. It'll help push into extension, but it's not going to directly target the problem of tight hip flexors. You need to stretch those for sure. That's so obviously number one, prone press ups or some type of prone positioning or the, what do they call it? The modified uh, oh, kneeling or, or a lunging position. Whereas you go into a lunge position and the, the leg behind you pushes into hip extension. That's another way to stretch the hip flexors. So targeting the hip flexors is, is the clearest, most effective choice here. Bridging and hook lying, that would be for strengthening the hip extensors. That would be for like a gluteus maximus gait. Uh, mini squats in bilateral stance. So mini squatting that is targeting the knee extensors. So if you had an anterior trunk lean during initial contact, that would be from tight or not tight, weak knee extensors. And so mini squats in bilateral stance would probably be a good option there. And then finally, sideline hip abduction. That's a good one to target the gluteus medius. So if you had a Trendelenburg gait, the sideline hip abduction would be your best bet. So in this case where we've got the anterior trunk leaning during the mid and terminal stance phase of gait, that's going to, to indicate the tightness of the hip flexors, therefore requiring some type of stretch into hip extension. So the prone press ups are the, the clear winner here. All right, so with that, we'll bring today to a conclusion. If you haven't yet, be sure to leave us a five-star review. Always helps. Uh, give us a like, a share, subscribe, and uh, be sure to check out all the other episodes we've got here on the NPTE podcast, totally free podcast. Hope you're enjoying it. Um, yeah, good luck in all your studies. I know it's, it's a lot of work going through all of the, the books, all your notes, everything, the practice questions, but let me tell you, it's worth it getting on the other side. It's a very satisfying and fulfilling career. It makes a big difference, not only for your life, but the lives of your patients and it's it's worth it so stick with it keep a grin on your chin we'll fist pumps all around and i'll catch you all in the next episode thanks